Hi, this is our first program in the new unit on periodicity. The periodic table is divided into both columns and rows. The columns we refer to as groups, and there's 18 columns, as you can see as you go across the periodic table. The rows, or periods, there's seven of them that run on the, on the left side of the periodic table. Now, so I could describe an element in terms of its period and its row. For instance, let's take the element tin. Uh, Sn, right here. I could describe it as being in group 14 and period number 5. Now, let's start by looking at the features that are common amongst things that are in the same column. They refer to these as chemical families. To do that, I'm going to take a look at the element oxygen. Oxygen has a configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Beneath it, sulfur, with 16 electrons, has the arrangement 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, so that takes care of 10, 3s2, and 3p4. One thing that we notice similar about both of them is they both finish p4. That's what's meant by the same highest level electron configuration everything in this column would finish P4. The elements that precede it would finish in sequence P3, P2, P1, and moving in the other direction, we would have P5, and if we ignore helium, P6. This block in the periodic table right here is sometimes referred to as the p block because you're essentially filling the electrons in the p orbit. There are also other blocks in the periodic table. Um, over here at this location we have the s block and elements that are found here would finish s1, s2. In the center of our periodic table this group in here, we have what we call the D block, and they would finish with elements D1, D2, all the way across to D10. And lastly, down at the bottom of the periodic table, down here, we have our F block, with elements finishing F1 through F14. Now, back to uh, our examples of sulfur and oxygen. The other thing they share in common is valence electrons. Valence electrons are determined by the highest energy level, which in this case is the two. So at the highest energy level, we have two electrons here, four electrons here. There would be a total of six valence electrons in oxygen, six outer level electrons. Sulfur, its highest energy level being three, again, two plus four, we have six valence electrons. So another feature of elements in the same column is the same number of valence electrons. And these would all have six, and again, if we work backwards, five here, four here, three here. Over in this group, we would have two valence electrons and one, and then proceeding in the other direction, seven and eight. So groups share these common features outer level electrons and valence electrons. Now the period gives us an idea of how many energy levels an atom has. So if I take a look at oxygen, for instance, it's got the 1s and the 2s. So this has two levels. You'll notice that it's located in period number two. Sulfur beneath it has three energy levels, and you'll notice that it's in that particular group. So it has five, uh, three energy levels. So the period gives us the idea of the number of occupied energy levels. Let's use these features now to come up with the electron configuration of a couple of elements. I'm going to return back to my element tin for a moment. So we know tin from the period up above it's in period in group 14 and in period number 5. If I want to do its electron configuration Let's back up to the nearest noble gas first, which is krypton.
that takes care of 36 electrons. When I get to the 37th electron, I'm at the fifth energy level and I'm starting to fill up the S. So I'm essentially beginning right here. So the first next two electrons would go 5s2. Now as I proceed across this block of the table, I'm filling up d orbits, which we remember from our sequence. After that, we fill up this sequence next. So I'm going to fill up the 4d with 10 electrons, taking me across to the element cadmium. Now I enter the p block, the 5p, and I'll put two electrons in there. This is then often tidied up so that you group together, or at least placed in order, the principal quantum numbers. So we would put 410 first, 4d10 first, then 5s2, and then 5p2. Putting it in this form allows us to quickly identify the number of valence electrons as four valence electrons. So you can see, you can very quickly determine the electron configuration of an element out by knowing its location in the periodic table. Let's try going in the other direction. What I mean by that is, let's see if we can take this configuration and figure out what element it belongs to. So in this example, I begin at the element argon. That takes care of 18 electrons. Coming across to element number 19, I'm filling up the 4s. So I'm beginning this question right here, and I fill up the 4s2. So 1, 2. I'm at calcium. Then I proceed to fill up the 3d next, and I'm going to fill it up with 8 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 arrives at nickel. So this would be the electron configuration of the element nickel. So that concludes our program on an introduction to the periodic table and its relationship to electron configuration. In our next trend we'll program, we'll take a look at the trends in the periodic table. Thanks for watching.